So my guess is none of you have ever met a three to one. See, I'm a three to one. A lot of people don't even know what a three to one is. A three to one is, is I'm going to have three drinks to every one of your one drinks. Now, you know, you may not think that maybe that's a lot, but think about it for the average drinker. It could really add up quickly. Here's how I knew I was a three to one, because I didn't know it until later in life. But when I was a three to one, I would pick you up to go to some type of sporting event because we were going to go have some fun and watch either a football or basketball or a baseball game. And what you didn't know is that I had already had one bottle of wine before I picked you up. Just to let you know. Okay, that was it. One bottle of wine before I picked you up. And then we get to the event. I ask you what you want. We go to the bar. We pick up that next level of drinks. That's one for me, one for you. We go sit down, and then I sit there and wait like this forever for you to finish your first drink. Why? Because I'm a Ferrari, and a Ferrari only wants to drive one speed, which means get your drink, let's drink it, and let's go get another one, right? But that doesn't happen. That doesn't happen. You are just like this, and I'm waiting, waiting for you to get down and get the, get the level of that drink down to when I can finally ask that beautiful question, would you like another drink? And you say yes, and I go by myself, right? I go by myself back to the bar. I order one for you. I do a shot. I order another one, drink it while I'm waiting for him to make your drink, then another one for me, and I bring it back to you. Three to one, three to one. Three to one, all night long. That was my MO. These are little things you start to learn about yourself once you've become sober. But it didn't happen all at one time. See, my cousin was out here from Michigan, and he had his two nephews with him. And they were coming out to ski and have a great time. And we were, oh, we had the best time. And we're back at my loft in Denver, and he sent the boys down to go take the bags out to the car because I was getting ready to take them back out to the airport. And he turns around in my hallway, and I'm looking at him, and he just has tears in his eyes. And I'm like, what the hell is wrong with you? And he looks at me, and he goes, you are the next to die. And I said, what are you talking about? He goes, I've been here for five days, four nights. You've drank 16 bottles of wine, and I think that's your norm. And I'm thinking to myself, well, it's not abnormal. You take a bunch of drugs in order to go to sleep at night. He goes, you are the perfect cocktail for never waking up. And so when I say you're the next to die, that's what I'm talking about. He asked me, how many of your friends have you lost in the, that were in their 40s? And three that came right to mind that left a wife and kids that all lost their lives to drinking. And I just looked at him, someone who I honor and respect in my life. He's like my brother. And I said, okay, I'm done. And he said, you're done with what? I said, I'm done drinking. He's like, just like that? I said, just like that. Now, how am I going to do that? I have no clue. But I helped him get the bags in the car, drove him out to the airport, and on the way coming back from the airport, I pull over off the side of the road, I get out of the car, and my knees hit the pavement. And I prayed to God, and I said, God, take the desire of alcohol out of my heart forever. And it was gone. I have never had a drink since that conversation with him. And my next anniversary will be five years without a drink. Alcoholism does not discriminate. You can be black, you can be white, you can be gay, you can be straight, a Republican, a Democrat, it does not matter. If you have that alcohol addiction, it is inside of your soul. And I'm here to tell you today that with a strong conviction and a strong passion in your heart, fall on your knees, say your prayer, ask for alcohol to be taken out of your life, and God provides.